Shall we all stand, please? I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, believeth in me, shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know mine end and the number of my days, that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long, and mine age is even as nothing in respect of thee. Verily, every man that liveth is altogether shadow. A man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. Again thou sayest, come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. I say that is past as a watch in the night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, peace and blessings to each one of you for coming out this morning to the Going Home celebration of our very own Sister Kathy Anderson. And we are grateful for your presence. Your presence means so much family, to the church family, to her friends, and we cheer to each and every one of you. And so thank you for making the sacrifice uh, to be out here this morning. Uh, more specifically, for those that uh, left the workplace, thank you for telling your boss that you were sick this morning and couldn't come out here. Uh, we're grateful for that as well. Pushing on the lion barrier there a little bit, but no, no, we are really elated that you are here to help us celebrate and that's exactly what, what to do is to celebrate here at St. Stephen we say so clearly we are not here because Sister Anderson died we are here because she lived and lived well amen can we give God glory honor and praise for that amen we will try to celebrate prayerfully all of you do have an order of celebration printed in your hands we've already had the processional we will uh, have the scriptures right after this from Reverend Andrew Collins, and then we'll have the prayer from Reverend John Johnson. And then as these things happen, uh, you can feel free to come up here to my left or if you're singing to my right. Uh, for the song, Sister Deborah Barber, what is it? Sister Barber, Deborah Barber, as well as an usher tribute from our usher board, they will come up. Then we will have a tribute from class 229, what is not printed in your celebration after class 229 is a video slideshow. And then after that, we will give you an opportunity to give reflections from family and friends. And then we will close that out with the acknowledgments and obituary by Sister Cynthia Jones, a selection from Sister Franklin, and then I will come back for the eulogy. And so we will continue the order of celebration as just mentioned, and we'll now have the scripture from Reverend Andrew Collins. I'll be reading to you from 
the Old Testament, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For our New Testament, I'll be reading St. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And it reads thus, Let not your heart be troubled, Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. May God have a blessing and hear and read and hear this holy word. Let the church say amen. Let us pray. Father, Thank you for such a time as this. What a beautiful day to celebrate the home going of the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that it is a celebration because we know where she's at. Resting in your care. And Father, we pray right now for the family especially for daughters and sons, those that were apart. Continue to give them the comfort and peace that they need days ahead. Let them know it doesn't stop here. Because, Lord, you said you are the resurrection and the life. And that you have prepared a place for those that have been redeemed. And, Father, when we leave this celebration, when the visitation stopped, when the phone calls stopped, Lord, and they're left alone, but you're still there, continue to bless them. To let them know that mom is all right. And if we continue to be steadfast and look to the hills, Lord, one day we'll look up and see our loved ones again. We thank you for this promise in advance. i 
Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm Cynthia Harrison. I'm the president of the Usher Board, and at this time, we'd like to do an Usher tribute to our sister, Jackie, and to the family. She will sorely be missed. What a warrior, what a courageous woman, and personally, such a supporter of me. Uh, I loved her dearly. I'd ask that all the ushers please stand.
Sister Bragg, have you found anything that we can use to perpetuate the memory of our departed member of this craft? Yes. I hold in my hand a pair of sparkling white gloves, which denotes the purity of Jackie's life and the willingness to serve man. Sister Spivey, have you found anything in your search that can serve as a reminder that this one who has passed into the silent land just a little sooner than we once served in this detachment of God's army that is called ushers? Yes, I have found a gold pen worn by members of the organization which showed that denominational barriers have been broken and church ushers of all faith have united in one band of Christian love. And Sister Powell, have you anything that we can use as a memento that this one who has acknowledged the supremacy of death once served in the aisles of this holy temple? Yes, I hold in my hand an emblem of service in the house of God, the badge of a Christian usher. These three mementos of faithful service I'll deposit in this vessel of remembrance and then place in the hands of the family so that unborn generations shall know that our departed sister spent a life of service in the house of God. You may be seated.
Good morning. My name is Shauna, and I'll be reading a tribute to Jackie Anderson by Ms. Rose Moore, April the 10th, 2024. How does one express the amazing essence and spirits of Jackie Anderson, her selfless generosity, uncompromising belief in all that is good, and her unwavering commitment to God, family, and friends? Words. Even the best of words cannot pay tribute or truly capture the sense of immeasurable loss that we are all feeling today. The loss is there, tangible and real, within each of us. But Jackie amplified life, love, laughter, and irrepressible belief and faith in seeing the best in everyone and everything, even in loss. And so today we honor Jackie by profoundly feeling and expressing our loss, but also by remembering her as an amazing person who has played a unique and special role in all of our lives. We remember Jackie as a wife, mother, sister, aunt, cousin, and as my friend. As a sister in Christ, Jackie loved her church family as well as her biological family. I'm sure her family will remember the beautiful memories and stories of her legacy. Jackie was absolutely amazing, family oriented. She would be missed by her love, gentleness, kindness, warmth, and her humble spirit. We will remember Jackie by her infectious smile and her quick witted sense of humor. And today we grieve for Jackie and cry for her and even smile for her. Jackie became a dedicated, faithful, and dependable member of class 229 on November 23rd, 2022, under the teaching ministry of Rose Moore and Deidre Lowe. She was an active participant in love, learning, and sharing the word. In her role as an usher, again, she was faithful and dedicated, as noted in St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church mission statement, demonstrating what it means to be God's servant in God's service, serving God's people. Jackie will be greatly missed and will live in our hearts forever. Jackie, God gave you a tough battle, and as Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4, 7, you fought the good fight. Jackie, may you rest in peace. And now I have the resolution from class 229 in love and memory of Jacqueline Anderson. We, the members of St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church, Sunday School Class, Room 229, want the family to know that our hearts are full as we gather together to say goodbye to a valiant woman, Jacqueline Anderson, the mother of Jenea and Andrea Anderson. We have great love and respect for Jacqueline Anderson and her family as they are very active participants and followers of Christ. Whereas... Jacqueline Anderson demonstrated a great faith in Jesus Christ and a commitment to her church and family. Whereas Jacqueline Anderson was a great mother for her daughters. Whereas Jacqueline Anderson worked with diligence and vigor to achieve the mission of the church. Whereas the passing of Jacqueline Anderson has caused a deep void of sadness in the church. Whereas Jacqueline Anderson was a faithful woman of prayer who served the Lord. Whereas the family and acquaintances of Jacqueline Anderson are deeply saddened at her departure, as are all who were touched by her generous spirit and kindness. And whereas Jacqueline Anderson suffered, suffered much 
physical pain that none of us will ever fully comprehend, yet lived in such a manner to touch each and every one of us with great, to touch each and every one of us with her great example of love and acceptance. Whereas Jacqueline Anderson's legacy of faith and service will continue to inspire her loved ones and every member of the congregation. Therefore, be it further resolved that we bow to a greater will than our own and rest in the knowledge that one day we will be united with Jacqueline Anderson again in joy and in the fullness of God's mercy. Humbly submitted in faith, Dr. Anthony Dockery, pastor of St. Stephen's Baptist Church, Deidre Lowe, Sunday School co-teacher, room 229, and Rose Moore, Sunday School co-teacher, room 229, April the 10th, 2024. Amen. Thank you, class 229. Excellent. As well as the video presentation, everything has been a blessing thus far, and we are grateful for it. Uh, we move to a time and a celebration where we can give you an opportunity to share how Sister M uh, Anderson has impacted your life. Uh, you can feel free to come to my left here to the podium, and as you see printed and you hear it, Mo Clearo ask you to limit it to two minutes. Uh, we'll try to get people through when you have things to share. So just a couple minutes and uh, while you're waiting you can sit here on the front row to my left as well. Good morning all. This is my family. It happened almost 55 years ago when I reluctantly landed at Jordan High School. I stood there alone, near the lockers, watching as everyone huddled in their cliques. No familiar faces, except the one I called my boyfriend. He would soon walk away, leaving me standing there to go hang out with his friends. As I stood there alone, feeling out of place, this neatly dressed girl approached me. Would you like to come over and join us in the quad, she said. It was at that moment in 1969, our lives became intertwined and we became lifelong best friends. She called me Ronnie and I called her Jack or sometimes as Laddie nicknamed her Cracker Jack. What's interesting is both our mothers were from Alabama and both had six daughters and no son. While in high school, Jackie would borrow her dad's car or I would borrow my sister's green 1965 Mustang so we could go party hopping. I thought Jackie was always so cool on the dance floor. I admired the fact that she was just cool without even trying to be. We ventured to house parties in LA and then Carson, because we thought all the cute boys lived in Carson. <laughs> we partied until past midnight in the Citadel, the Kappa House, Mavericks Flat, where we would go pop lock, robot, cha-cha, <laughs> and an occasional slow dance, keeping the guys at their proper distance, of course. We danced under strobe lights and black lights that showed all the linen on our clothes, and Murray's grease in our hair. When we both turned 18, the Carolina West became one of our favorite spots, and we partied there until it closed at 2 a.m. Then we'd head over to Bob's Big Boys on Century to order shrimp and fries and grilled toast. <laughs> Jackie was very level-headed, and I knew that if I call, if I knew that if she called me by my first name, Veronica. I'd said or done something that she thought I shouldn't have. We kept each other in check. Back in the day, she probably kept me in check more than I did her. Since we were each other's confidant, we talked about any and everything, and sometimes everybody, usually, usually to gain each other's perspective. She had a way of making things make sense. We were trusted friends. 
She had excellent style in the way that she dressed. It was no wonder she was voted best dress of our senior graduating class. She was also an excellent and creative interior decorator and helped to decorate my home. I was a bridesmaid in her wedding and she was my matron of honor. Whenever life threw me a curveball, she was the first person I'd call and vice versa. She raised two beautiful and sweet spirited young women. She was so very proud of them and rightly so. We celebrated victories, each other's birthdays, family milestones, and supported each other during periods of grief and sorrow. To my children, she was Auntie Jackie. To her daughters, she was Auntie Veronica. She called my grandchildren her grandchildren. She was more <laughs> than a friend. She was as close as a sister could be without sharing the same blood. She was my sister friend. There's so much more I could say about her and what our friendship meant to me. But I will end with this. I wasn't quite sure just what I would write. My mind was at a loss for words, despite my heart's willingness to express the sentiments of who you were and always will be in my heart, my bestie, my bestie. I love you. Just want to say, there was not a more beautiful smile She was my godmother. Her and Marvin were the best couple I ever seen in my life. <laughs> and one thing that I always remember about her, she would always crack a joke and keep a straight face and wait for you to laugh. <laughs> I love you, Auntie Jackie. Auntie Jackie. I love you so, Lord. That love and care to my family. Love sharing her time with family. Even to the point where she had this thing called timeshare. And where she devoted her time to her lovely sisters and her beautiful daughters. Auntie was like our family photographer. She loved taking pictures. Loved making everybody smile as she smiled. I'm gonna miss the random text messages from her. When she called in and texting, I'm just checking on your nephew. Send your prayers to you and your coworkers, hoping that you're safe on the road. <laughs> she gonna be truly missed, but I know she in a better place. She's another rose added to our rose garden. Love you, Shaggy. Jackie Meyer Anderson. Jackie was my sister in Christ. She was my friend. She was my confidant. She was wise, kind, and compassionate. No matter what the bad situation was, Jackie always found some good in it. When we reconnected while she was living in Chino Hills, um, 
we would call each other like at four and five o'clock in the morning and talk for about an hour and a half about situations that was going on in our lives and talk about the Lord. Um, and whenever situations were, were dealing with doing uh, conversation, she would always manage to say her favorite words. You so silly. <laughs> so she was a morning person. In school, David Star Jordan High, she was voted best dressed, as Ronnie said. Uh, and, and she was an usher in church. And she had called me and told me this joke that she had about the usher lady. I don't know, she probably have shared it with a few of you. And it was about this young lady who had came to church and she was inappropriately dressed. And the usher gave her a lap uh, napkin to put across her lap. <laughs> And so the next Sunday when the young lady came to church, because Jackie, I mean, Jackie said the usher lady in this joke had told the young lady, well, you know, you're kind of inappropriate. I'm going to give you this lap napkin to cover your lap. So the next Sunday, the, the uh, young lady came to church, and the usher lady walked toward the young lady, and the young lady said, all right now, usher lady, I ain't dealing with that today now. Leave me alone, usher lady. So, <laughs> <laughs> so whenever Jackie would get feisty, I would tell her, all right now, that's your lady. No, <laughs> all right now. <laughs> okay. And she had the best detective skills. Whenever I would call her and I would say, hey, Jack, because I called her Jack. And so whenever I would call her, I'd say, hey, Jack, I met somebody. And first thing she would say, okay, what's his name and what's his address? And she'd say, <laughs> I'm going to call you back. <laughs> she, she would call me back, and she would have everybody he was married to, all his kids, wherever he had lived, how many times he'd been married, the whole shebang. So she was my private investigator. <laughs> yeah. And, um... I, I heard this quote from this philosopher, and it said, the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. And the Bible says, it, the Bible put it this way, so a man thinketh, so is he. So I say to the family and to J Janae and Andrea, after all the, mourner, all the mourners have gone and, and, and all the condolences, and everyone is back, in their respective homes, and the gloom hits. Go to God for your strength, the creator of the heavens and the earth. There's no stronger strength than that. And, and, and you're going to need it for the rest of your life because you'll never forget her. And think about the times when she would say, <laughs> you so silly. <laughs> She's so silly. Or, or the advice she gave that help you through hard times and comfort you. I do believe that God placed Jackie in my life to give me an example of a virtuous woman because that's what she was. She was a virtuous woman, and we will miss her. Thank you. Good morning. Jackie and I, uh, we attended junior high school, high school together. Now, them six years, the many classes, we only had one class we in together. Never seen in English. I used to come to class every day, clowning, acting up. She would look at me and say, you need to sit for being so silly, you must fail this class. <laughs> True enough, I failed the class. <laughs> And when I went and told her that I failed, she just looked at me and the little thing she used to do with her mouth, did that, <laughs> turned and walked away. <laughs> yeah. But these days, you know, y'all have uh, Google. Back in the day when we wanted to look up a word, we had to go to the Webster Dictionary. And in the Webster Dictionary, <laughs> J. 
you would look up the word friend. Then little letters, black letters. And next to that word, it'll be. <laughs> it's a noun. Describe a person, place, a thing. I learned that by looking at Jackie Paper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, that's in the book of Webster. If you look in the Larry Whitehurst book, you have to run across the word a friend. And I say run across because in my book, would nothing be alphabetical order, it just be in there. And if you happen to run across the word friend, first of all, it'll be about an inch high letters about a quarter of an inch thick, and the letter was being read, indicated the love we had for each other. And the background would be white, like clouds, something you couldn't touch, but you knew it was there. That was our friendship. <laughs> First, when I left, we stayed in touch. Went to the military, every now and then I got a card from her. One card I remember saying, don't be no hero. <laughs> Keep your head down and come home. <laughs> <laughs> but she, I guess she didn't know, didn't realize it was peace time. We didn't have to worry about none of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 50 years, you know, we, we didn't talk much at first because, you know, we both were trying to navigate our way through life and try to understand what was going on, provide, be a good citizen, and all other good stuff. But recently, we've been talking quite a bit, texting. And sometimes we'll talk five minutes. Sometimes we'll talk 15 minutes. Sometimes an hour or more. And at the end of the conversation, she'll say, all right, brother. She never cut it short. You know how we get lazy and say, bro, and all that. Okay, brother, time for me to get off this phone. I love you. Talk to you later. And I would say, okay, sis, I'll talk at you later. I'll holler. <laughs> but today, <laughs> goes something like this. Hey, sis. Guess I go sit my butt down. <laughs> you rest in peace. Don't worry about the girls. I got your back. And tell Marvin when you see him, I said hello. Oh, yeah. Don't y'all wait on me. In her Jackie voice, she would say, you so silly. <laughs> so, I love you, Jackie. <laughs> now I holler. These tributes are priceless. Yes, yes sir. Wanted to acknowledge. Uh, thank you for sharing. It is so helpful and insightful. Uh, some good information has just given us a 360 picture of who Sister Anderson is to all of us. We'll get these last two here and then we'll move forward with Sister Jones with the acknowledgement of her story. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name's Deborah McCarthy, and I've known Jackie for 37 years. She was one of my first co workers. As an adult, and she was such a light and spirit. <sighs> Standing before you, having to say goodbye to her is one of the hardest things I've had to do. Because I didn't get to say goodbye to her in person. I'm trying to keep it together. We had made plans to have 
lunch a few weeks before she died. And she called me and said, I don't think I can make it. I'm not feeling well. But she didn't tell me why. And that's okay. I just want you girls to know today and Andrea how much your mother loved you <laughs> and how much she was so proud of you. And your mom and dad are reunited and you should be blessed and happy that you had her in your life. She was a beacon of hope and joy. And I'm not super religious, but she was a face of God to me. She was always inviting and open and always told everyone she met that she loved them. And I want you to know that those are words that will carry you forever till you are reunited with her. I just want you to know that the last thing she told me, even though she was going through something horrible, something that her body, I don't know how she took what she took, I offered to help her in any way I could. All she said was, thanks, sis. I'm going to do my best and fight, but God's will will be done. So I want you all to know that she was a light and a special woman, and I will never forget her. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, I didn't write anything, this is spontaneous, but I'd been seeing Jackie around church for a while and it was just her smile. I mean, it just lights up her face and the room. But <laughs> in 2008, was when I really started getting to know Jackie in class 225. I shared something in class, and she looked at me and she smiled and she said, I would have plucked her. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her and I'm going, ooh. <laughs> that, this is like a fierce little whisper of a woman. I did not realize just how much of an impact she would make on my life. Jackie was fierce. She was fierce for the Lord. Her love was fierce. It was God, family, friend. And I'm just so grateful that she allowed me to be a part of her journey, that she called me sis. She always called me sis. Just want to let you guys know that her light is eternal and she is missed dearly already. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Praise God. First of all, I want to give honor to God, to the pastors, to the ministers on the roster, to the urshers, to the saints, and to all of you, and especially to the family. Before I read the acknowledgement and obituary, I just want to say to the family that Jackie, she was an amazing person. She was very loving, kind, she had a beautiful heart, and she did have those little jokes. We are truly gonna miss Jackie. And I just wanna say, like Raymond said, another rose added to the garden. And I just wanna say, when the sisters took that trip in September, they were all together. They had their t-shirts, they had a good time, and it's the pictures, they was just beautiful. 
everything is God's plan. And he knew that they needed to come together and have that time together. And I just want to say to each one of you guys, I love you so much. And I'm going to, I love Jackie and I'm going to miss her so. But I'm going to proceed what I'm supposed to do. So I'm going to read these two cards and an acknowledgement and I'll continue with the obituary. Sometimes life is hard to figure out. Challenges and obstacles arise that were never in our plan. Yet God is always there to take us by the hand, walk with us step by step, and guide us through the good he has for our lives. Thinking of you as you walk through this difficult time and asking God to show you his love in his unmistakable ways. This is from Deborah Barbara. And it also has a little scripture right here. It says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will straighten you. I will uphold you. And that's coming from Isaiah. That's chapter 41 and verse 10. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. That's coming from Psalms 145 and 18. May God, who watches over us and hear us when we pray, be very near to give your strength and come for you today. May he bless and keep you within his loving care, and may it help you to just know that he is always there. In sympathy and love, Reverend Andrew and Margaret Collins. From the family, the acknowledgement. There are really no words to express our heartfelt thanks for the outpouring of love and support extended to our family during this time of sorrow. Your thoughtfulness, prayers, words of comfort, and love will forever be treasured in our hearts. Jackie was born March 1st, 1955 in Los Angeles, California at General Hospital to Claudia Myers and Clarence Horn, who preceded her in death. And her godmother, Rosa Wicks, also preceded her in death. Jackie grew up in the Jordan Down Projects in Watts with five sisters who she was close to. Jackie attended Jordan High School where she made lots of friends and was a member of the pep club. Jackie would always cry when the Bulldogs lost a game. Some of her friends considered her a square, but that was all right with her because she knew they loved her. During some summers, when she stayed with her father, she attended summer school at Washington High School. In the summer of 1970, while walking home from school with friends, she met Marvin Anderson. Jackie was always willing to make friends, but the friendship with Marvin was something special. Even though Marvin was away at college, they, they never lost contact and would talk for hours on the phone until one fell asleep. On June 9, 1973, Marvin and Jackie were married at Ivy House Gardens in Inglewood, Cal California. After adjusting to married life, they received their first blessing, a daughter named Jenea, in 1974. They, they both worked together to raise their daughter. Jackie started working for Occidental Life Insurance Company in August of 1978. She remained there until June 2004. Their second daughter, Andrea, was born in April 1980. Marvin started working for DWP, and they purchased a townhouse in 1983 in West Covina, California. They lived there until 1995 before moving to Chino Hills. 
they were able to provide for their daughters who both graduated from college. Now it was their time. Marvin and Jackie enjoyed many good times and a, and a lot of Thursday night dates. In 2007, Marvin lost his battle with pancreatic cancer. Jackie knew that it was God's plan and she had to find a way to keep living and found, I'm sorry, and found ways to adjust. She found happiness in serving as an usher at St. Stephen Baptist Church. She loved the Lord and would do her best at whatever he led her to do. Later, she would join the Red Hats, the Sparkling Jewels. She became Countess Jazzy, as known as Little Jackie. She was always the one cracking jokes and always smiling that beautiful smile. Jackie leaves to cherish her memories, her daughters, Jenea and Andrea Anderson, sisters, Gwen, Mary, and her husband, Ernest, Amanda, Joyce, her husband, Tony, Lena, and her companion, Wayne, um, Celestine Collins, nieces, nephews, great and great, great, and a host of sister and friends. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Jackie, we love you and we truly are gonna miss you. Praying for you, family. Precious Lord, take my
Father, we do come to your name, your son, Jesus, grateful this morning. You being a Lord, you being a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. We are precious that you take our hand and you lead us from it. Lord, you lead us from one day to the next. You lead us from danger seen and unseen. as we have these moments to look at your word that it would indeed serve as a source of comfort and strength and insight. Father, that you would give peace right now and clarity as we wrestle life in a different context one that's truly special to all of us. Physically, not with us. But celebrating and knowing she's walking on the street paved with gold much as she loves her family, she's saying, I'll see you on this side. We pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. It truly is a privilege and honor to stand before you to eulogize one of the greats here at St. Stephen. No question about it. Humbled to do it as well. I'm really grateful for her daughter and the way they have championed her care over the years, especially since their father, her husband, went home to be with the Lord. They have been a trinity of women holding it down, and we are grateful for them. Amen. Do you give them a hand? The way they looked after their mom, and you know, she can uh, not be the easiest uh, patient, if you would. <coughs> They definitely gave her all the care and the love and attention uh, that she could handle. So we pray God's choice of blessings on them as they forge ahead. You know, it is a heavy load to carry when both parents have gone home. But God's word is true. He said, I will be a father for the fatherless. That uh, implied the mother as well. And you can also hold on to what they poured into you guys as well carry you forward. Amen. And the rest of the family as well. I really appreciate all that's been shared and everyone talking. Uh, her friend that shared her being the face of God, there's no words better that can be uttered by anybody than for someone to see God through your life. And that's what a eulogy is all about, is to speak well of that person that has gone home. Sometime you try to find some things you can say. Sometimes you have to reach deep to find some things. You have to reach back to find some things. But as we know, Sister Anderson gave us a plethora of things to share. And so in praying about a text that would speak to her, uh, we could go through all 66 books of the Bible, whether it's Esther or Ruth or Proverb 31, Woman of Virtue and Honor, uh, so many uh, that we could use that would speak to her. But the one that we have is a familiar passage that, is read often at funerals. I don't know that the context always comes out, and the context, I think, is more relevant for Sister Anderson. And it comes from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting at the sixth verse. And it says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Amen. Thank you for standing in honor of God's word. You can be seated. I just want to speak from the thought of Sister Jackie the Jokester Anderson. <laughs> Sister Jackie the Jokester. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Yes. And you know yes. she was a jokester. Yes. Turn to your other neighbor. Say, and she still is. Yes. Amen. The, the isness is still here of Sister Anderson. She is a jokester. 
Uh, I remember when Pastor McCall was retiring and all the transition was going on right over by that door. Uh, we had just walked out of the door, and she looked over at me. You know, everyone's saying all these serious things and praying and all of that, and she looks over and she says, you ready for this? <laughs> and I just looked back at her, I said, I, I hope you praying. <laughs> and somebody talked about her lips, you know, how she'll just, mm -mm. and that's what she gave me, just walked off. She just turned up her lips and walked off. And I'm like, okay, all right. The jokester is still alive and well, that's good. Fast forward a few years, and we'd be at the door, and, you know, after messages, people would come out. You know, people are kind, and they say, oh, that helped me, oh, that inspired me, or different things like that. She walks up, looks at me. You think you bad, don't you? <laughs> I'm like, where did that come from? How do I? She's just the, the jokester, always the jokester. And um, this, this, uh, the part that you guys really hit me with is I thought I was in an elite, alone category. Uh, we have this alter ego here at St. Stephen. It's called Joe Neckbone. And Joe Neckbone does this thing sometimes on Thanksgiving. And so one time after Joe Neckbone showed up and did his thing, right at door number four, she's walking out and she says, you so silly. <laughs> so I hear all these silliness out here. I said, I thought I was the only one that was silly. But I see many of you are even more silly than I am. So that is a good thing. But in talking about this jokester, uh, she had so many qualities and strengths. And the things that resonated the most about her, even though she could joke and kid and had that quick wit, in her joking, she also had advocacy. She was a tremendous advocate for people. Uh, and she was compassionate. So she would have advocacy, she would be compassionate, and the joke and the laughter would be in there, but you know she cared. And then she also had this obstinance. Right? She had this strength, and that stuck out the most because as she was getting ill some years ago and fighting through things, I would check on her, ask about her health, and she'd say, now you know you need to mind your own business. <laughs> or she'd say, why are you calling me? There's so many members at St. Stephen. How did you remember my phone number? I said, well, you're in the database, so you don't remember my phone number. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to always find something, right? But an advocate... Always, she was that person that uh, when someone's going through something, you know, we have members that when they're going through challenges, uh, the enemy is good at kind of making all of us stay on an island and wrestle with it alone. And somehow, Sister Anderson would find out about it, about it and then she would call and she would say, such and such would probably enjoy a phone call from you, but you didn't hear it from me. And if I find out that you did tell him, I say, Sister Anderson, we got it, we got it. But she's an advocate for so many and so compassionate. And this was happening literally just weeks and days before her going home to be with the Lord. Literally, she's calling and texting about other people that are ill when she's only moments from going to the hospital herself. She was right back there ushering at funerals just a couple weeks ago. Right back there ushering at services just a couple weeks ago. Right back there cutting up in Sunday school just a couple weeks ago. I won't keep you long. I just had to share those things, uh, the impact that she made. Second Timothy is a book written by the Apostle Paul. He's speaking to his protege, Timothy, who was coming into the scene to serve and to serve the Lord. And as uh, this is happening, Paul is imprisoned. Paul is feeling like his life is about to end. Uh, he's wrapping up his ministry, and he's trying to pass the baton to Timothy, his protege. And so in the beginning of chapter 4, he says, I charge you, saying to Timothy, and this is actually 
uh, Sister Anderson speaking to us, and this is why I felt it really is something for us, uh, because she is in glory, right? She's walking on streets paved with gold. As one writer said, there's no more pills and there's no more bills where she's at. She's good to go. It's us still walking on this journey called life, trying to figure out our path, and now trying to figure out even more with such a bright light uh, being moved away from our journeys. And so this is what Paul is trying to impart in Timothy and what Sister Anderson is trying to impart in us. So I charge you, therefore, before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, says, preach the word instant and be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Says, really, just be about the work of God. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come where people don't want to hear good news. All they want to hear is bad news. Just watch the local news and you will see that. He says, after that, he says, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, wanting to learn what they want to learn, but not wanting to learn what they need to learn. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall turn their ears away from the truth. If there's one thing that Sister Anderson would definitely do is keep it real and tell you the truth. Anyhow. And they shall turn to fables. People will rather hear a lie than to hear the truth. Man, many wives put men and husbands in a tricky place. And they say, man, do I look fat in this dress? They want to hear a lie rather than they want to hear the truth. And if that man is wise beyond his years, say, everything you put on, my beautiful bride, you look outstanding. And today, you just turned it up 35 notches, right? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they will turn to fables. But watch unto all these things. He says, listen, I want you to watch this. She's saying, watch. This means be vigilant and pay attention. Endure affliction. Yeah, your husband that you've been with, that you love, y'all met when you were little kids, dated three years, got married, beautiful life, beautiful daughters, beautiful home, beautiful careers, and all of a sudden, illness comes in and life is redefined. Affliction, heartache, pain, challenges, they surface. He says, be ready for that. He says, but while you're going through it, do the work of, the, of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Ministry just means of your service, of how you help. And she served with excellence. Then he says, now, let me tell you about me, because this is where I'm at. I pass that on to you, but this is what you should do. And I'm saying this so that you can model it yourself. He says, for I am now ready. Right? And that ready is, is an offering. I have now prepared myself. I've made provision because I've been doing it the right way. And when it's all said and done, have you done it the right way? Some people say, once this happens, what is this? Once I get this job, once I finish this degree, once I get married, unfortunately, once I get divorced and get rid of this, once I, once we're always waiting for the next chapter and sometime before once happens, the Lord calls. You don't want to be that place. He's saying, Paul says, I am now ready. I don't have a once. Not looking for that next thing that needs to happen. What God has asked me to do as a parent, what God has asked me to do as a professional, what God has asked me to do as a student, what God has asked me to do as a believer, what God has asked me to do as a non-believer to become a believer, I've checked that box. I don't have to look back with regret because I know anything that I did right or wrong still made me who I am today. But I've checked the boxes. I am now ready, he says, to be offered. That means I'm ready to be the final offering to God. In our lives, we can bring an offering. That's what the altar is all about. We can give our offering in money. We can give our offering, obviously, in time. We can give our offering in talent. We give our offering many ways, but what he's saying now, I'm ready to give the ultimate offering. I'm ready to give back this gift that you gave me called life. It's come to a close. I love my daughters, and I want to be here with my daughters. But, Lord, I understand that you've given me the time that I need, and now they will go on. I'm ready to be offered. And the time 
of my departure is at hand. That time means set time. See, all of us, somebody has probably told you before, all of us have an expiration date tattooed on us somewhere. It's already set. We can't change it. We can't see it, but it's there. We all have a set time. We don't know how long. It's not your age. It's not your gender. It's not your race. It's not your location where you live. It's all about Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God makes that decision. God makes that choice, and it's already predestined. The time that is set of my departure, my unloosing and letting go of what this is, is at hand. And it's not easy to let go of what we love. Try to do it. We are addicted to salt and sugar. Try to stop. You start getting headaches. Anybody stop drinking coffee that love coffee? Your body says, you better go get you some coffee <laughs> right now. It's not easy to lose things that we become addicted to. But when you are ready because you are in harmony, because you are in step, because you are one with God, you have peace to make that move. And so then it says after that, he says, and here's the reason. If you're wondering, he says, because I have fought a good fight. Right? I, I put it, it didn't mean I won every battle. Right? But I gave my best effort. And sometime I came up short, sometime I won, but I know I put my best foot what? Forward. I fought a good fight and I have finished my course. I didn't finish Reverend Collins' course and I didn't finish Reverend Johnson's course and I didn't finish any of your course because I can't finish it. I can't stay here and keep living someone else's life. But mine has come to a close. Yeah, those, those are powerful words. And this is one of the things that stuck out to me the most about Sister Anderson. Very rarely would we have conversations about her illness. Matter of fact, the times that we did, it was when there was a shift or a transition in what she needed to do with her treatment. But once she made that step, silence. Never, to me, complained. Ever. Every time I saw her, I saw all 57 of her teeth. Every <laughs> single time. Fought a good fight and finished her course, her life. And then the end of that verse says, and I have kept the faith. Kept is a military term in Greek that literally speaks of I have guarded my faith, but faith here isn't just speaking about belief. Faith here is actually speaking about my convictions and the truth. I have kept the truth and I've held to my convictions. Why is that significant? This world is always pushing us to compromise. It's always pushing us to embrace a lie over the truth. Right? For convenience with us or convenience with others, sometimes we are pushed and pressed that the lie is the better option. But the text is saying, even though because he is looking at being killed for his faith, he said, I'm going to hold to the truth even if it means dying. I've kept this faith. I've guarded it. I've put a barrier around the truth and my conviction. Last verse here transitions and it goes a little bit further and it expands now to include us. It becomes very inclusive in verse 8 and he says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That's what she has. And I appreciate that Sister Barbara came and sung the song, I shall wear a crown. Wearing a crown in the Bible, it actually speaks of an emblem or a symbol, symbol of success, valor, or overcoming. So you have this symbol that you can put on? No. The crown of righteousness that this speaks of, Revelation says, God will allow us to have crowns not so that we can put them on our head, which would be nice that we can wear our crowns. That is not the purpose of the crown. The crown is so that when I see the master, I can do what? 
I can throw it at his feet. Man, would you want to be the person that comes to a crown throwing ceremony with what? No crown. So there is laid up for me, and that laid means there is reserved. Not like Avis sometimes. You get there, and they're like, I'm sorry, we don't have your reservation. We're all out of cars. But I had a reservation. (laughs) Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me. Now, here's the critical piece. When is he going to give it to you? That day. What day is that day. It's the day that's in that same verse. It's the day of judgment by that same judge. That day is the day of judgment. What are we in in today? It is this day. So there's only two days. This day and what? That That day. What you do with this day really determines how that day is going to be. That day is either going to be walking on streets paved with gold, potentially seeing Brother Marvin and and Sister Anderson yet again, or don't even like to hear it, do we? (laughs) Summer like you've never had it before. (laughs) And that day, but here's the the ending, and we're closed. We're done. Here we are. At the very end of this verse, And I can really hear Sister Anderson saying this as a jokester and extremely serious because she has it all. She's there. She see it. She's feeling it. She's living it. But she says, and not to me only. So real quick, before we say, and not to me only, let's remember what the only, and what it is. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. But not for me only, but unto all them that love his, being God's, All that's simply saying all of us that have fallen in love with God, all of us that have invited God into our hearts, all of us that have acknowledged our sin condition, all of us that have acknowledged our brokenness, all of us that have seen, Lord, I can't fix this on my own. I plead the blood of Jesus all over my life. Save me, restore me, heal me as only you can do. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. You too will receive crown of righteousness and you will get to see sister Jackie the jokester Anderson once again father thank you for this time to look at your word thank you for sister Anderson and how she's poured into our journeys and our lives over the years we continually pray for her daughters we pray for her siblings her sisters Pray for her friends and her neighbors, her co-workers, the Red Hatters, and of course her church family and members. And Lord, that we can all rally around what she believes in and what she cherished. And Lord, we know first and foremost it was you, then it was family, then it was friends, and it's just been an overall good thing. May we all emulate and do the same. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. That Todd Mortuary come forth, please. Um, at this time, we're going to call upon the pallbearers who will be escorting the casket out to the funeral coach. So we're just going to come up the center aisle. And as we do come forward, please do rise as, we co- as the casket, uh, casket comes by you. Thank you.
Shall we all stand, please? Lord, thou has been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever the earth and the world were made, thou art God from everlasting and world without end. Thou turnest man to destruction. Again, thou sayest, come again, ye children of men. For we consume away in thy displeasure and are afraid at thy wrathful indignation. Thou hast set our misdeeds before thee and our secret sins in light of thy countenance. For when thou art angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end as it were a tale that is told. The days of our age are threescore years and ten. And though men be so strong that they come to fourscore years, yet is their strength then but labor and sorrow. So soon it passeth it away, and we pass. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this part of our celebration. We ask that you would quickly go to your vehicles so that we can caravan over to Rose Hills so we can have the graveside celebration. God bless you.